let's begin. So, um, my screen. Okay, um, we're opening up the special um, the Housing Authority Board meeting, 927-22 at 12.07, for the purposes uh, to hear our proposal on the, um, the beautification of Drake Village uh, from our landscape folks. And um, why don't we, uh, we need a roll call, so um, the board, Joanne? Here. Nick? Here. Gar? Here. And Fiorella? Here. And Brian is here. So let's start. Um, why don't we just start right in with the architect? If you want to uh, go over some of these plans, I, the board has all received them. Some of them have see, seen this multiple times, but um, we'll turn it over to you, Naomi and Leah. Hi, I'm Naomi Cottrell. Um, principal of the Drake Village Housing Authority. Um, and joined by Leah Broder. Hello, all. Thank you for um, making the time. We'll go ahead and share our screen. Um, everybody should be able to see this. Yep. Okay? Yep. Yep. Okay, great. Yeah, I'll let you go ahead and introduce. Okay. So, um, as you know, um, Drake Village was awarded a creative placemaking grant from DHCD. The goals were developed um, with the residents um, in the application process. Um, so the goals for the project, for the grant, the use of the grant funds are to creatively redevelop the open space, encourage healthy activities, make connections to natural resources and provide opportunities for greater physical activity. So these were the guiding, um, guiding ideas of our um, design. In terms of the process, we have had a pretty robust engagement with the tenants and with the housing authority, um, which included paper surveys, as well as multiple meetings with the residents. Um, most recently, uh, the beginning of this month, we had a meeting to review the design with them. And so the, all of the kind of input that we got from them was really about what, what would serve them best in, as we look at making improvements to the site, given our, um, given our budget and timeline. And what we heard from the residents is that their priorities in terms of use of open space and physical activity were walking, other kinds of fitness, seating opportunities, raised beds for planting, for growing, um, flowers and food, more shade, and seasonal color. We asked where they would like to focus these improvements, and what we heard was around the Hauser building, so both in front and back. We also heard interest in making a nicer connection to the um, walking trails at the Arlington Reservoir to the northeast. And we also heard some interest in making a nicer connection to the Minuteman bike path. What we found as we dug into that site, this is at the corner of the, um, of the parking lot, is that that site really wasn't appropriate um, for that use because we don't really wanna encourage people walking through the parking lot. And it's also where snow is kept in the cold seasons. So with those things in mind, we focus all of our um, attention around Hauser and the entrance to the reservoir. So we'll go through the design with you um, just generally to give you a sense of the overall picture because really what, this, um, what we're seeking to do through the design is create a much more appealing and enjoyable space to be experienced through walking and moving also through sitting and even from looking out from people's residences. So the existing conditions, as you know, is the, the cottages, the, the kind of suite of cottages um, along Drake Road. And then there's the um, uh, larger Hauser building where the majority of the residents live. Currently there's a um, drop off with an island and there's a shade garden where um, a set of mature oak trees ring the outer edge and pine trees at the center. And so that's kind of going to be the area of focus when we dig into the um, conversation around trees later on. I'm just gonna jump in and say that when we did have a meeting with the residents, um, some of our thinking about 
um, these trees or, or I guess the question about these trees changed a little bit and originally we were looking at um, proposing six removals this this drawing shows and annotates five removals and because there was there is this um, larger tree in in the island that we determined after site walk and talking to the residents and the member of the conservation commission that we should try to save so that's no longer um, part of our proposal the removal of that um, is no longer part of our proposal but looking at removing two trees that are in poor shape um, one along drake road and the other in the traffic island and those two we heard from the residents were um, not of a concern. And so really what it comes down to, the concern, the tree, the concern about trees really focused in on the three pines. And we'll talk more about that as we go forward. And I should say to start, please um, do interrupt with any questions or comments, and then we can move through the design presentation, give you a little minute to kind of absorb it as we talk through it. And then the, obviously we'll have conversation following but um so this is the this is of course a, a very zoomed out plan looking at all of the site improvements and so what you see is the focus of improvement around the Hauser building both in the front and the back and then a little spot kind of of um, improvements right at the reservoir in total this project will be planting 29 trees um, and we'll, we'll zoom in and give you a closer look at what those landscape improvements are. But staying on the idea of the trees for a moment, we also have spoken with um, DPW about getting addition, a donation of an additional 20 trees. Those would be for improvements um, in the right of way. So in a long Drake road, because currently the trees that are planted, there's overhead wires there and so we're interested in planting trees that are more appropriate smaller understory trees um, we also want to provide more shade um, and and seasonal color amongst the cottages so that's an opportunity with those dpw trees and we're interested in incorporating shade um, associated with the parking lot at the northeast corner of the site so looking more Looking more closely at the entrance to Hauser, um, what you see here is the, the drive drop off with a sidewalk, there's benches adjacent to the sidewalk, there's a small concrete terrace with some seating and a low wall. Um, and then all of the area that's drawn in kind of this brown color under the big green circles, which are the trees, represents the area that is pretty much exposed to dirt or mulch. And we'll talk a bit more um, about that. The three pink X's represent the three trees that are in our first op design option proposed to be removed. Oh, also, I should mention in this kind of shade garden in front of Hauser, there is a white kind of funky octagon shape and that represents a uh, gazebo. Sometimes it shows up as brown, so. <laughs> um, the gazebo is, we think, about 10 years old. Um, so what we've proposed here is a redesign of the drop-off and entrance, keeping the general kind of site strategy that there is now. And one of the big moves here is to, act, to actually raise the level of the drive and narrow the road. And what this does is it makes the, the walking surface coplanar with the driving surface so that there's easy mobility to and from um, vehicles into the, onto the kind of seating terrace, which is um, just south of the building and then into the building. Today there's ramps and signs and it's rather a chaotic um, kind of composition. Um, we also are incorporating a lot of um, flowering understory trees to provide shade and color along this um, sidewalk. There would be a grass strip between the sidewalk and the drop off. We also have bollards as a kind of vehicular barrier between the pedestrian areas and the vehicular areas. 
And then there's a fair amount of um, perennial and shrub planting right around the building, in addition to all new benches. And then over to the west, where we're proposing, where you see those pink X's representing the removed pines, we are also proposing removing the gazebo um, in this scheme. And so we have replaced the gazebo with a place to gather, which is a paved terrace with, with a few tables with movable chairs. Um, so we think that this provides a nice variety of seating options. It also allows us to plant under the, what is now the pine trees where we currently can't plant. So this could all become mowed lawn. The other important piece to mention is the new accessible crosswalk. So currently, and I should have mentioned this when we're looking at the overall plan, but currently there is no identified crosswalk or way to move as a pedestrian from the Hauser building anywhere else on the property. So it's kind of a free for all the way pedestrians move from the sidewalks around their residences at, at Hauser onto Drake Road or over to the reservoir. What you see here as kind of a striped pattern crossing the road um, with the two new, with the these little gray rectangles, which represent um, accessible curb cuts, is really a new, allows for a new circuit walk, a safe and circuit walk throughout the property. I'll just mention this in that um, when we heard from folks, a lot of what people wanted to do was to be able to use the paths in and around the cottages as well as around Hauser as a bigger loop which is something that's great um, as far as the, the trends that, that we are seeing in, in senior living. Um, and so we know that having to navigate a curb um, going down into a drivable way is, is something that's pretty dangerous. So simply putting in a curb cut here, we also have one, um, I'm gonna go back just so that we have the overall plan. So, if you're here, you're sort of currently are landlocked at Hauser, you have to cross a driving lane without any sort of curb cut, and you have to mount curbs. By doing this curb cut here, you can get over here and you can access all of the circuit over here. There is an existing crosswalk that's right here at the beginning of Drake Road after you come down over the bridge. This we would keep. Um, we talked to the town. They didn't want any changes done. Um, there, so we are. We can navigate this as a circuit. Um, you can cross here on this crosswalk, and then you can actually come down in front of the two cottages on on the right hand side of Drake Road. And we've added in another curb cut here to connect again a loop that then gets us to the reservoir. Um, so we're making these loops, um, and so this crossing is is something that we thought was important to point out. Joanne, you had your hand up. Do you want to ask a question? Yes, I did. Can you hear me? Yes. Good. <laughs> um, I'm wondering about those benches. And I'm sorry, I should have noticed it when I looked at it before. But the benches, as you face Hauser on the left-hand side, um, yeah. they're not in the shade, or are they? Um, I don't know what that black dot is. Maybe that's a tree. That's a big tree. That's a catsura that's there right now. So this is actually quite shady. Good. The second question is the route on the way in, were you going to plant the town donated trees? Ah. Is that a town tree or a private way? This road here is yeah. a town road. Until we get to, a, uh, there is a sort of a property line that runs uh up through here okay so maybe getting way ahead but if you remove that tree that is in all in here oh, you have to have a um you have to have a hearing okay i mean i think that that's fine we can do that yeah we either make that separate from this project or we you know we do it but i i think you're you're right jurisdictionally that that would be within the right of way of the road. We can I didn't want you to get all set to do it and then hold up your whole project. Yeah, because... no, it makes sense. That's also, you know, part of the reason why we want to do it now is that if we've got someone removing trees on the property or a landscaper that can do that work, it's great to do it all at once. So 
I think that that's not a problem as far as going to a hearing for that tree. Can also again be on a separate timeline if we need it to be. Can I also yeah. ask you where those wonderful uh, Princeton mm -hmm. elms are going to go? You have eight Princeton elms in your original. Well, we can we, 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 Can we get there? Oh, can sure. We we'll, we'll get there. We promise. I thought we went past it. Fine. No, not yet. We haven't gotten there yet. We're still over the overview. Um, yeah. anyway, we wanted to just go over this whole, you know, the overall for the front so that you all have the opportunity to see the overall ideas, not just focusing on the on the topic of these pines, but to show you overall. And so this is these are some renderings that we put together. This is the existing of the, um, looking towards the the entrance of Hauser. And this is one of the areas that people really wanted some color and some shade. So our proposal does add in um, flowering trees. Again, I'll go back to the existing. Again, we're moving the road slightly so that we actually these the the benches that are against Hauser are actually in landscape rather than feeling like they're right on the road. So this is just some some simple about what we what we were showing there. We have a question. So is it possible to add a crosswalk from the Hauser building so people can get to the uh, reservoir? You go back to your design. I'm not sure if there is one there. I mean, just yeah. So there isn't, um, and that well, there that, is. There, it's just yeah. Problem. You go back. So how you get to the reservoir? If you wanted, if you ha had to be able to the mounting curbs, you'd come down in front of Hauser, and you would come over to this crosswalk. And again, Leah yes. did a lot of work with getting together with the town. We originally had proposed a crosswalk here. They did not want it because it was too close to both the curve and to this crosswalk. So you would come down here, you would cross here, and then you can get over to the reservoir. So we why can't not do one here because there's no sidewalk and there's not room for a sidewalk in and around this cottage. So that was sort of a tough spot because there's no, there's utilities and there's other things, but we can't cross here. It was, it was sort of like a at, it was our first gut reaction, like, oh, absolutely, we would connect here. We couldn't do that either. Yeah, that doesn't make some sense because I don't see people walking all the way around like that. But, um, but I don't know, maybe you can relook at it. But go ahead, keep going. Okay. Yeah, I mean, our challenge is that the, because it's the town road, the, pre the logical place for that crosswalk would need to be installed by the town. And so that was a conversation we had and didn't, and you know, that's why we arrived. But, the town, but doesn't the town road stop where your cursor is? It's no, it actually it's like goes up into here, right? Yeah. So oh. it stops, it stops about here where this line is. It's up here. And in order to do a crosswalk, you kind of try to get it off the you try to get it around the corner. You don't want a crosswalk really on yeah, right. the end. So it would so have to be further the, south. Who from the town did you talk to that? that Michael um, Rademacher, head of DPW. Jack, maybe you could um, re redirect that conversation. I mean, it just common sense tells me to put the crosswalk right up there. Um, do I know who there? Jack was there. Do you know who, who gets redirected to? What's that? Is it actually, redirected to a different person or is it just it, to ask him again is, is what you're suggesting? I, I would I would say, look, at you know, it's if my uh, fellow board members agree that the board feels strongly that there needs to be a closer crosswalk for the house of folks to get to the reservoir. Because, you know, really, I don't see them walking that massive loop to go to the res. I mean, right now, they're just going to cross the street right there. So, right. you know, accepting that reality, we should figure it out, you know. I think it's a great point. I absolutely agree because people are going to cross there. Yeah. Way. We did it ourselves. Yeah, we did it ourselves the other night. Yeah. Oh. And, they, and also, we have residents with mobility problems and so forth. We have the same problem with Chestnut Street. They don't want to put a crosswalk in. If they don't put a crosswalk in, they think nobody's ever going to cross there. But that's not true. And we need it for safety reasons. Yeah. Well, I think it, we'll leave that to Jack if he would like us to go back. Um, but I think your point is is a good one. It's one we've made, but we're happy to try to do it to talk to him again. Yep. Yeah, I, I think we can continue to advocate um, 
for something like that. Um, you know, when Jim Feeney, the deputy town manager, and Michael Rademacher, the director of the DPW, were out, they um, they they provided their their guidance at that time. But maybe with future budgets and and other considerations, they'll um, take another look. Yep. So just to move so that you all can see the back of Hauser, I'll give the Fiorella. Yeah. Just the Fi uh, Fiorella's got her hand up. Go ahead. Okay. okay. Um, so are we gonna go more in depth about the gazebo by any chance? Yes, we will. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I'll we wanna that. give you the overall and then we're gonna go back to that area to really look at what's going on there. Okay. Okay. So this is um we're looking at Hauser and now honing in on the back of Hauser, which currently is a kind of um, fire lane in, in relative disrepair today and a, and a concrete terrace that has some movable picnic tables on it, which is, this is all immediately adjacent to the community room. So this is a great place for there to be a kind of outdoor life and, and um, place to be, but currently the paving, if the, currently the space is not accessible and the paving makes it very difficult to navigate. And there's not much out there aside from these two benches, which are the brown rectangles, um, and then some movable picnic tables that come in and out, I guess, depending on the season. I think it's, it's worth noting because I think it's a surprise to a lot of folks how close the property line actually is to the back of the building. So you'll notice that our improvements are tucked and don't go over that line. We're also, you'll see the annotation at the top of the page about the wetland buffer. So we are, we're in the, um, within 200 feet of the Mill River, both in, um, of the Mill Brook, both in Lexington, where it, where it, flows through Lexington to the north and where it flows through Arlington to the west. So th this is the design proposal, um, which shows a new newly paved fire access road kind of realigning to be a more gentle curve. And it pulls the fire road all the way to the edge of the property, which gives us a little bit more generous space between the community room and that fire lane for a another a paved terrace with furniture. So we're showing three um, new picnic tables that have spots for folks in mobility um, devices. So we also are showing um, raised planter beds, opportunities for folks to um, plant. And those are also accessible for folks in mobility devices. So the level of the soil is high enough that if you're in a wheelchair or uh, you don't have to lean over too far. Um, and then lining that dining terrace are some catenary poles, which will have string lights for events and things. So really thinking about extending the period of time folks can be outside comfortably in the warmer months. There are new um, benches, as well as a lots of new planting. So this is where we have the elm tree, kind of alley of elm trees staggering along the road, providing as much shade as possible. Um, we also are looking into a sailcloth feature that might, or, or um, umbrella feature that might, we might be able to use over those picnic tables for additional shade. And then we've got um, perennial planting and shrubs in the area between the building and the fire road and the dining terrace. So really thinking not only about using the space outside, but also views and the experience from the inside for all the folks who are inside, especially during those shoulder seasons when it might be a little too chilly to be outside. So this was again developed earlier in the process and while it's not exactly where we ended up with the plan, it does give you a feeling of what we were proposing here. So again, the relocating, uh, realigning and repaving of the fire lane so that it actually feels like a nice walk that could be programmed with other events. And then all the planting that we're doing for shade and for color and texture and new seating. Um, so again, this isn't exactly, but to give you the feel of, of where, where we're going. Just briefly, we'll touch on the area in front adjacent to the reservoir. So this kind of peach colored shape represents the current paving 
that connects to a bridge over the Mill Brook that gets to the reservoir, gets to the Arlington Reservoir. On the um, Drake Village side is a, another kind of fire lane with curbs and a sidewalk just on one on the north side. Our proposal, we only color the work that we're doing. So we're introducing this curb cut and a new crosswalk, which makes a safe connection for folks coming from the south. They can then use the, the existing sidewalk and connect to a nice new entryway. We're removing some chain link fence, installing a low timber rail, similar to what is along the Midman bike path. Um, and then this concrete terrace has bike parking and bench with a buddy spot. So people can be sitting at the bench and there's plenty of space for um, others to come with their own seating devices as well. So those were the, you know, to go back to where we had identified with the residents on, on our initial, um, you know, uh, gathering of information with folks, the front of Hauser, the back of Hauser, and then this, this uh, spot at um, the reservoir, and then the curb cuts really is the bulk of, of what the placemaking grant is paying for. Um, and then we know that there was a concern um, about the proposal to remove the three pines and to remove the gazebo. And just to start, we're gonna, we're gonna go through the options that we prepared because when we went with the residents last time, we heard that both the gazebo and the pines were something that folks were not um, super comfortable getting rid of. Um, but to back up, we wanted to tell you all why that was our recommendation. Um, I'll chime in for a minute. Yeah, for sure. Subsequent to your meeting uh, at our board meeting, we looked at that gazebo and Jack had a great idea of moving the gazebo behind the cottages. There's a, there's a nice area there uh, that it would fit perfectly and assuming that it won't fall apart. But um, so. Which and, and we're actually completely in favor of that because the, the reason why we were recommending the removal of the gazebo was there was a couple reasons. The first reason being that it's already a really shady area. The, the shade you get from the oak trees, which again, um, there, there's a, the outside ring here are very mature oaks, they have large canopies. The shade that you get from those and this beautiful cat tree that's on this side of the walkway, um, the, the black circles are the trunk, representing the trunks. So those are the center of the trees. And then the spread is this, the secondary green circle. Um, it's shady, so you don't really need the shade. It, the, the other part was that when we, when we canvassed the opinions of the folks in the community, people said the reason why they didn't go in there was because it was very dirty and, exactly. and dirty from both the fact that the dirt in and around it is exposed because nothing can grow there on the ground plane underneath the, the pines and because of all of the pollen needle litter. Um, and so it was sort of a, for us, we said, okay, well, the gazebo maybe doesn't belong there. Um, and we also looked and said, the, the pine needle litter is making the soil so acidic in and around this whole area that you really do have a problem. It's very problematic as far as growing any kind of ground plane. And so we heard a lot about how dirty the area was especially when the wind blows because of the pine needle litter and the exposed dirt. So again, to us, that felt like that was, uh, those were those were things that were not great about either the pines or the gazebo, um, which for us, we thought, okay, well, we can do better. And so that's really what our proposal was showing. Uh, to Again, to give a little bit more background into the pines, um, my suspicion is the pines were planted, when they were planted, they were planted as a, you know, a six to eight foot backdrop behind the gazebo as something you would read the gazebo in front of. Um, and then they grew to be 40, 50, 60 feet tall, and they have no vegetation, um, with the exception of this one, this one where we're Xing out its trunk here. This one here has some vegetation that starts about 20 feet up. The rest of them are all defoliated which is the natural way pines grow. Um, 
the other thing that's concerning to us about those pines is the way in which they do shade out the oaks and this catsura. So again, thinking we, we felt like our recommendation is that we could do something far better in here, both for gathering and for health of future trees. So that's just a position where we were at before we went into um, you know, the, the options here. This is just to show you all, you know, the condition of the ground um, is again very depleted of nutrients because of the of the pine, the pines. This is really how it looks most of the year uh, without much growing there um, and it really being mulch or just exposed dirt and pine needle litter. So that again, that was the big aha moment for us for the gazebo. Um, I think the other thing about the, um, I think I've gone through, actually gone through all of these, these bullet points. Um, so that's what, again, that's where we came at this from the initial. Um, so, yeah, uh, the other the other piece of this is that um, it is quite mounded up in here, um, mm -hmm. and again, I think the original the original design was probably these pines quite low, and there was more of a shade garden with other things in it. But as they grew, and their their needle litter got further expanded from the canopy, um, it really made this whole area kind of inaccessible. And now you're weeding the ground because there's nothing growing on it. And so it's not nice to walk over it. It's lumpy and bumpy um, without a lot of the advantages of say other plantings. Um, so I'm gonna go through really quickly these options that we put together. Um, you know, the one option is that we can keep the existing, um, but and that, and that the pro for that is that the people who'd like to see the gazebo stay and the three pines stay, that's the pro for this, right? We can keep things the way that they are. But we would say that the con, and probably the biggest con, is that we don't feel comfortable being able to add in that ADA crosswalk. And the mm -hmm. reason for that is the crosswalk we are putting right between these two oaks. We want to stay away from those oaks. We do not want to um, get into the, the majority of the root zone. So we are coming through here in between those two, which is actually right on the, the roots of this pine tree. So if we were to keep the pine tree and we were saying, okay, we're going to keep those, we're going to keep them as healthy as possible, we would not feel comfortable putting in that crosswalk. Do you have something to add to that? Yeah, yeah. Well, I, just to preface this whole conversation to say that the the entry, the drive, the changes to the drive and the entrance terrace stay the same. And all of these options were really just focused in on what happens with or without the pine trees and the gazebo. But the other point is that to get that ADA crosswalk, we're, we are doing, we're regrading the part of the pathway in the root zone. Right, so, so that's what will yeah. become the yeah. issue. So we're lowering the grade. So we want to drop the ground down, which is, we think, w would have a negative impact to, to keep So it if you took, you took those pine trees out, would you, you would obviously take the trunks out of the, dig them all up? Oh, yeah. So you could level it down? I see, yeah. yes. Yes, the, the basically inside this ring, yep. that's what we're talking about, all the changes. So anything that was inside this ring, if we took the pines down, all of that would get recreated. Yeah. Um, so that it was flatter, could be planted, and then we could also add in this crosswalk. Yeah. Okay. Um, so those are the cons, the no crosswalk. We can't put any new plantings in here uh, because of, again, the acidic nature of the soil and the shade from the pines. Um, and we would say too, that if you're going to keep the gazebo in this location, it should really have a renovation, which is not within our budget. Um, we can't really do that renovation. Um, so then option two was the proposal that we had come up with, which is really that within, again, this inner, this inner circle is all new. It's regraded such that we can get the crosswalk in here, that we can um, get new soil in here to plant grass and other ornamental trees. And then we're proposing a new open gathering space that um, is underneath the shade of this Katsura um, but still open and visible as you come and go. Um, and we think that there's advantage to that as well, to see and be seen as people are coming and going out of the building. Um, the con here really being that we've, we've removed the pine trees and the gazebo that, um, that folks have, um, have an affinity towards. Um, 
but again, new ADA crosswalk, new tree and lawn planting, we eliminate the pine needle litter um, and we have this new open gathering space. Now, were you taking down that cement wall that's in front of the place? Rock Actually, wall? it's it's not, it, we're not. Um, this is, it's being shown here, unfortunately, with white um, because we're only showing the things that we're redoing um, in color. And so that wall would be right here. Could that wall come out? It could. I mean, we felt like it kind of gave an edge to the to the the space. Um, and then grading wise, it's not retaining. I think it's a freestanding stone. Right. Yeah, it's a mortared stone wall. I think the, we kept it as a way to kind of enclose that space. It yeah. feels what's there today. You know, we're we're sticking pretty close to it because the scale of those spaces is quite comfortable and people really okay. use and enjoy them. So it kind of felt like let's spend our money in places where it's going to have more bang for the buck. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, it just needs to be repaired. We looked at it the other day and it just, it's going to need some masonry work to be repaired. Yeah. So. Well, well yeah, I mean, we can look at it again and if it makes more sense to remove, then we'll add more uh, in here. I, I mean, you guys are the experts. I would just take them to look and Okay. Well, that's a good point. We just happened to notice it the other day at our meeting, and uh, I mean, it's crumbling. We just assumed you were going to take it out, but uh, you should take another peek and see what you thought. Okay. Um, so then option three and four that we want to show you all is our two compromise schemes. Um, and so in this scheme, we're saying, okay, we keep the pines. But again, we don't think that the gazebo and the pines are working well together because of all of the litter and the fact that we just heard it over and over again, the reasons why people don't go in there is because it is dirty and pine needles are all in there and it's double the shade. We got you know, the shade from the roof and the shade from the pines and the shade from the oaks. Um, so it's dark and it's dirty. So in this, very simply in this scheme, we're saying we keep the pines and we take the gazebo out, maybe you move it to somewhere else if you can. Um, and we put in a new that you know on grade gathering spot um, so that again it's it's out in the open people can see it but it can be it can be broomed clean um, and it, then the needle litter doesn't have to stay in the walls which is where it is right now and get on the floor so but one thing to point out is we've made it one third the size uh, because. Um, we are really trying to stick to the footprint of the gazebo so that we aren't cutting into the root zone of those pine trees. Again, we want to, if we're going to keep the pine trees, we don't want to do anything to harm it. So we have made it a smaller gathering spot. And again, we've eliminated the crosswalk because we can't do the grading required to get that level so that you can come around and go down. So again, keeping the pines and doing a small renovation to where the gazebo is to have that be an open gathering space uh, on grade. So your yes. uh, three proposals, two of them would have to eliminate the ADA crosswalk. Could you not? We have a, we have a fourth. Um, oh, you have a fourth, I'm sorry. Yeah, we have keep a going. fourth that's, keep that's coming up. This one, yes, anytime we keep the pines, we are, we are eliminating the option to do the crosswalk yeah. because of the grading and the root damage we would do to the pine itself. Couldn't, couldn't you put the ADA crosswalk elsewhere? Like well, that's a great point. Um, let me go to the fourth option and then we'll get back to the, that because that's a really good point and we studied that quite a bit and we'll, we'll talk about that. Um, so the fourth option is the opposite. You keep the gazebo and you get rid of the pines. The, the thing that we think the pros of this is that, okay, so you're keeping the gazebo, which people did like. You can do the crosswalk because you can regrade this, this section in here. You eliminate the pine needle litter, so it makes the gazebo ultimately easier to care for. And we can plant a new lawn and have other small trees that would stay small, understory, in, inside this um, inner circle. You know, the cons are we remove the pines and that we also think that you do wanna do maybe a, a more minimal, but there's still a gazebo renovation that's not within our budget. So the gazebo, will, the gazebo will remain the way it is today. So there's no renovation. In, in the placemaking budget, in the placemaking budget, we don't have the we don't have enough funds to renovate that gazebo. You know how much that would be? 
it, so things that we heard, so it, I think it really varies widely depend, depending on what you, how you want the gazebo to perform. We heard all kinds of um, uh, things from the residents from enclosing it and making it like glassed in structure, um, making it, uh, you know, have more solid, solid walls, other things like that. Um, I think a minor renovation to it, if you really get rid of the pines and you clean it up, um, I don't even know if I can throw that out there, mostly because I think if we keep the gazebo, we also want to look at the, the ground on, at the right. gazebo so that there's no trip hazards and other things. Um, we, it's not really in our radar because we weren't keeping it. If this is the way that you want to go, we would need to do some study into what it would take to clean that gazebo up. Yeah, I, was just yeah, I think I think Nick the the thing with the gazebo is it's dark and dreary because it's exactly. got mold. It really needs to be out in the bright sunlight. The spot that Jack noticed and recommended behind the cottages is is a, is a bright and sunny spot. So if you pressure wash the thing, cleaned it all up, um, I think we could do that. Our staff could do that and moving yeah. it with, with the forks. So that was my, that was my yeah, question. I mean it's made of it, it's plastic plastic wood, so it could be moved. Yeah, that's, that was my point. Trying to keep the yeah. gazebo is probably not a viable option. Right. Um, I I wanna, the next thing that we would do is to go to these four options, but I want to go back to Joanne's question about the location of the crosswalk, um, if we can. Um, so it, close your eyes if you get seasick, <laughs> because we're going to go quickly back through to a larger mm. plan that gives a larger context. Okay. Rules about crosswalks, you really shouldn't have them on, on right on a corner. So a corner that is a, a proud corner, right? It can be on a curve, but it should not be on a proud corner. So that's, that was the issue here. Obviously, if we could put one up between, you know, a straight and a straight through here, that would be great. But you don't want one on, on a proud corner. You don't want one where you're going to be connecting through another driving lane. So all through here is not an option for that crosswalk. Then you get into, you get into this bend over here. And it again, you've got people coming around this way and this way, a blind corner. This is also in this zone is not, is not a safe spot because you're coming around two blind corners. This is actually of this whole curve. Do you have something to add about that? Well, yeah, also at the, at the right up here, because of the way the road has settled and the curbs have settled, the curbs are actually much higher than six inches. And there's no, like the sidewalk doesn't really exist adjacent to this cottage. So you kind of, you've got nothing, no options all the way until you get as in, into this area, which, which Naomi is talking because about. It's, because it's a reverse curve, it's an S here. It, that's that's also one of those spots that in um, you know improper sidewalk and cross crosswalk designs you don't want to get into that S. So again, it's really this is really our best spot. We studied that mm -hmm. quite a bit, and again, we we went through with DPW on on those kind of recommendations, and they agreed that this is the right mm -hmm. um, way you go. You also want to be as parallel to a uh, per perpendicular, sorry, to uh, the sidewalks as possible. So coming off at an angle in a weird way also doesn't doesn't really work. What so, about what about the very end where the parking lot is? There's the the road is there sidewalk. Um, there well, there's no sidewalk along along the edge of this cottage. No? Is the issue. And so this this is really determined and it's really tight this corner of the cottage to the road this is not a place that you want to promote people going. i was thinking at the end right there whoops you can't see my cursor um right at the end where the parking lot begins in here yes no 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 crossing the street obviously here. a little further up so in here nope the other direction yeah. There's no crop, there's no, there's no side proper sidewalk on the whole side of this cottage. Uh -huh. And and so you, there's nothing to tie into. You, you, there's no crosswalk. To, you, a crosswalk usually connects mm -hmm. 
two sidewalks sides. on two sides of a road, but there's only a sidewalk on one side of the road here. So this and is actually town, is, this isn't town um, road, is it? This is housing authority road. Yes, okay. It The town ends at- uh, here, for sure. We still, we still, as far as if we're drawing these drawings, we're still following best practices for roadway design, even if it's a private location. So those that was our reasoning um, in eliminating all of these spots. Plus, I think it's really important to note that what we heard from folks is that people in the cottages and people in Hauser want to have a safe way to cross between the two. And if we force people way over to the side, it's yeah, not going to be regular that. flow of traffic. Yeah, they won't do that. So this is, you know, the other thing is that we also really looked at where are we going to point people to? You don't want to point people into someone's entrance to their cottage, um, which are a lot of these are direct entrances in the cottage. So we want to bring people to the sidewalk that rings the road with the ability then to either go left or right or to then go down this path that is the loop. And so it was something that we studied. We do, we, we firmly believe that this is the best spot for the crosswalk for all of those reasons. So just to, uh, so we don't keep everybody on all day. So we have two proposals to keep the trees. We have pine trees. We have two proposals to get rid of the pine trees. Is that right? That's correct. So if we go to this so, slide, option- Why, don't you, why don't you leave that slide up? Yep. Let's, go, let's, yep. uh, let's go around the board members and um, each take a, a few minutes and, and tell us which proposal you think is best. Um, uh, I, I'm in favor of, you know, I'm, I, I don't want to, you know, I, obviously I'm not opposed to removing trees. So I, I like number two w without the pine trees. Pine trees are tough to work with. Um, I know a lot of golf course guys, they, they remove in pine trees like mm. every year because of the root systems and shallow roots and the pine needles and like, like they said, the acidity. So it is a kind of barren area in there, and I think it needs some sun and some new life. All right, Fiorella. Um, I agree with Gar. I'm between like option two and option four. Um, removing the pine trees for sure, because I know those are kind of dead too. So with the safety hazard of falling, you know, falling branches or something. Um, my the only thing that I want to know is which one will give the most like green space if we were to thinking um like physical activities gatherings. Um I like the new picnic, you know, the picnic tables and all of that. Mm -hmm. Mostly the tree is gonna give a shade and it kind of looks like it'd give it more space um to maybe plant stuff. I guess. Can I interject one thing in response to that? So one of the things that I heard um, from the, the housing authority staff and Jack is that people, as they're waiting for rides, there's a group of people who practice Tai Chi um, at the front of Hauser. And so the option to have a terrace with movable furniture and an open green space, I think, um, mm -hmm we think that we're giving there's a lot more you know both two and four give that opportunity if they want to do it on paving i think number two is more has more opportunity for that um but i'll just mention that because that we didn't have mentioned that yeah interesting uh, i i uh Fiorella, anything else you want to add i think that's it for now um just bearing in mind that that gazebo would be repurposed um, and if we kept it there, we'd have to re rebuild it to some extent. We think we can just repurpose it, but, um, uh, Joanne. Um, yes, thank you. Um, I have, um, <laughs> I don't have a very clear recommendation because, um, something that hasn't brought up about the pine trees is, um, climate change and these large pine trees which are not dead, probably live another 50 years, um, are very good at sequestering carbon, which is a main potentially, I'm not saying it correctly, it's a main cause of 
climate change, which we see now. We had the hottest summer on record. Um, we had an extreme drought. Um, they hold a carbon load of 8,000 to 10,000 pounds of atmospheric carbon. And if you, if you cut them down, all of the carbon escapes from these, whether you use it as firewood, whether you throw it in a dump. Um, so that's, that's a real concern of mine. Um, and going forward, the pine trees remove 20 or so pounds of atmospheric carbon, um, which is really important. Um, so I also know that some residents like them for their shade and the greenery in the winter, which none of these other trees have, of course, because they're deciduous trees. And they act as a windbreaker for the space around the front door, especially in the winter. Mm -hmm. So I'm just trying to interject some virtues of these pine trees. Um, and I'd like to see some way if one or more of the pine trees might be saved for these reasons. Um, the fact that they don't have greenery underneath is just, well, some people like pine needles. We don't, I'm not sure we want open spaces. Um, one of the problems we have at Chestnut Manor is all of the places to sit outside are in the sun. So when I went there this summer to water the small trees that are there, they're gonna take another 30 years before they give any shade. Um, because nobody's ever sitting in them because they're too hot. So I'd like to see this plan in a way think about um, the future and what's going to happen in terms of, uh, we're gonna have more droughts, we're gonna have more hot summers. Um, so that's a virtue I not mentioned about the So time. which plan are you advocating for, Joanne? Um, I'm, I'm not advocating for any of them because I, I really would like to know more, which we can't know at this meeting, about the ADA crosswalk, because I think that's equally important. And I don't know that we have to cut down all three pine trees in order to have an ADA um, crosswalk. So I will leave it there. The one you would have to cut down is the one on the corner. This, if you see my cursor, this yeah. one that's here. That's actually the one that's in the, that's the healthiest, that's got the most vegetation on it. Um, well, so none of them. That was when we looked at would we would we keep you, one, and the concern. Are you trying? Are you trying to say that there is three pine trees aren't healthy? I mean, that was. I believe <laughs> that. Well, I, well, let me say it's got the most foliage. It's got the most vegetation on it. Yes, because when pine trees grow, the yeah. lower branches always die off, yeah. and they. So having a few lower branches that are brown is not a sign of illness. Of right. any and yes, it, it's just that it has more, it has more vegetation than the other two. The other two are quite top heavy. Well, cause they're larger. Yeah. Um, okay. I will okay. say this just for everybody's benefit. When you look at options two and four, we have actually estimated the spread of those pot, of the oaks that exist right now. And you'll see that the, the majority of this walkway and where we're proposing the gathering is actually underneath the shade of those veg, mm -hmm. of those deciduous trees um, that would be to remain. Yeah. Well, we don't really have a lot of time, but there was, there was one other thing I wanted to suggest is the trees, the tall trees, as opposed to the understory trees on your plan are very small. They're three canicker right? The uh, Princeton Elms. And they, the last two years of all of the street trees that have been planted in Arlington, 65 of them failed because of the heat and the drought. So this is completely different than choosing this. But I just want to suggest, because I think having these Princeton Elms, we need elm trees again is a wonderful idea, but we probably should get slightly larger ones if they're really going oh, to- right, yes, right now. So what Joanne's talking about is that on our plant list, we do have a three inch caliper, which means that at um, chest height, it's measured, it measures three inches around um, the trunk. Those are, those are probably quite large, I would think a bit larger than street trees. Um, I know that 
Uh, most uh, municipalities plant one and a half to two inch size for their fruit trees. The other thing that we're doing is that because this is a project that is planted, um, that would be that would be installed by a licensed landscape contractor, they will be required to do maintenance and watering and um, and upkeep during a warranty period. What we have talked about with the housing authority is to have the warranty period extended from what is typically industry standard is typically a year that they take care of the trees for the first year. We we want to write into our spec that it would be a two year maintenance and warranty period so that they are doing the watering and the care for the all the new trees for two years. Very um, good. Yeah. It it means that the placemaking grant will play will pay for that extra year of care while these things are being established. We then do need to figure out how, how the housing authority can do the watering. We really, what, what is best is that there is an intensive watering schedule for the first two years. And then there still needs to be watering really for the next five, mm -hmm. for the next three. So first five years, but it's less intensive in, in years three, four and five. Um, and could be done with gator bags that are filled by whether it's yeah. staff or whether it's residents. Okay, so I let think me understand this yard. I'm just going to abstain until the to give the conservation commission a chance to weigh in on the pine trees. So, um, uh, folks, the if I'm understanding this correctly, you're proposing planting trees of a width that's pretty much double what the town plants. No, no, the town plants. So they, we lost a lot of five-year-old trees. Ryan, so Ryan, let, them, let them finish for a minute. That, my, I mean, that's my understanding is that mo I, I don't know exactly. And I, I, if I could, if I knew which plantings we were, we could look at them. But typically a three inch caliper tree is not the size that municipalities put in their street tree plantings. They're typically one and a half, two inch caliper trees. So how tall are these things? That really depends on the species. Um, but the, the elms, the elms will be about uh, 15 to 18 feet tall to start. They're very fast growing. Well, they're big. Okay. Those are, again, those are the ones that are planted on the back of Hauser where there's no, where there are no yep. trees or shade there at all at this point. Yeah. All right. Okay, let's move forward. I'd like to just abstain on these plants because I'd like to hear what the Conservation Commission says. I saw, I saw um, that Nick had his hand raised. I don't know, Nick. Yeah, we're going to Nick. Nick, what's your thoughts now? Nick? My thoughts are, I like option two so, so much, I'm going to move to vote on option two. Okay, we have a motion to approve oh. option two. Do we have a second? I have a question, actually. Um, where is the tree that we need to cut down because of the power lines? It's at the beginning of the room. That's so that has nothing to do with this one. Yeah. It's no. not in okay. this area. It's on, right. it's on Drake Road as you're coming in. Yeah. yeah. So, we so floor. all we need to do is the, the 88 crosswalk, which would mean only removing that one pine tree, right? which would then mean that we could keep the other two pine trees that are right next to the proposed like picnic area. Can we still do the picnic area leaving those two pine trees? You could. Um, I mean, the thing that you won't get, like if we go back to the like pro and con list, the thing that you won't get is you, the ground still is going to be leaf, is going to be needle litter and will not be able to grow. Um, much, if anything, underneath them at all. So you'll still have that open patch of, of bare soil. Okay. Um, so that, I mean, again, and in these others, we're saying we can flatten this, make it an accessible, an accessible area to gather. And then also that this is an area that you can get onto the lawn because it won't be lumpy and bumpy and, um, and can have other trees planted in here. Well, I, I would be for removing the one pine tree for the ADA sidewalk. I don't know. I, that might be option five <laughs> on here. And I, put keep a motion, I put a motion on the table. Yeah. Meeting, removing all three pines. 
What's the biggest tenant complaint? Because that's the only thing that's like making me a little concerned. I'm just getting. Uh, hold on just a sec here. So okay. we have a motion on the floor. We need to accept or reject the motion and then we can continue debate on the motion. So the motion moved by Nick to approve. Uh, to adopt yeah, uh, this is Gar. I would second the motion. I, I am, I'm in favor of um, option two. Okay, so now discussion. Go ahead, Fiorella. What's the biggest tenant complaint? I mean, if what? not to be rude, but if they're so unhappy with all these plans, then is it something that we have to do? Do is there any way to like? Then we're gonna make well, everything. We've already discussed it with them, so I don't see any like clearly. No one's gonna be happy with maybe any decision. So you're not gonna make any. You're not gonna make everybody. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I can I can address no, that because no, I, I you're attended. You're gonna have to make a decision. Right. Right. I mean, I did. I attended the tenant meeting when we introduced Fred as president, and there were about sixty people there. Um, and the discussion did go into the landscape project. And unfortunately, when the tenants were up in arms, they were under the impression that we were taking every single tree down. So when I explained it in great length and, and distributed these plans, uh, not not the option three and four, um, the tenants were all in agreement and liked the idea. So there was two people that didn't, that wanted the pine trees. One guy wanted the pine trees, Scott, because he likes wooded areas. And that was his sole uh, reasoning. And another woman wanted the pine trees because uh, she couldn't convey it. She walked out of the meeting. So, um, but, but it was pretty much unanimous that the plan looks great. They look forward to it. So, so I think, you know, we need to vote on one of these today so this thing can get move forward. So we don't have this five hundred thousand dollar grant. I, isn't there a grievance that's still active that we have to settle? Nothing to do with this. And nothing to do with removing trees. Nope. Really? A tenant grievance doesn't affect the board vote here. And I, I think you're referring to what Fred put forward, but I think Fred withdrew that at the last meeting. This Fred is 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 in agreement to move in the trees. So, so we have a motion second. Anybody else have any other questions? Can we add a tree on that like left top left corner of the yeah like right right there? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, uh, we can and and we sort of played around with where trees might go. We absolutely can add another okay. tree in here. Good. All right. I they're different trees. Here. I mean, they're understory trees that can take the shade of these oaks, which is fine, which is actually what we heard from people that they wanted, which are things with color and seasonal yeah. interest. So we can certainly add another tree in here. Nice flowering trees, right? Yeah. All right, let's take a vote. Um, Nick, Nick? Yes. The vote, is, the vote is to approve option number two. Nick? Yes. Fiorella? Yes. Gar? Yes. Joanne? No. Uh, Brian is a yes. So the vote is four to one. Um, Jack, you could work with the landscapers in getting whatever needs to be signed and, and scheduled and so forth. Um, and perhaps the only last thing maybe you could figure out is, is there a way to get a second crosswalk to go to the, um, to go to the reservoir? If there's some way, shape or form. To do that. Yeah, I think that's important because it doesn't yeah. make sense to cross three roads to get to the res as yeah. opposed to one. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if we can even just paint something down on the paint across work ourselves on our own property. True. Yeah, you know, kind of like the way they painted this bike lane on Mass Ave. Yeah, you know, paint in the middle of the road. Um, no option like that, but couldn't um, we also just put like one of those poles that have the stop signs, like a resident crosswalk, or I mean, resident crossing, or something like that. Yeah, I mean it's our property, so I'm sure we could do that. Yeah, but well, uh, well, that's that's that I have. for the town to do it. We're trying uh, to get not, on, not on your own property, actually. I don't think we need to, as long as it's on our property. So, oh. uh, all right. Um, thank you, folks, for your time. Okay. Thanks to the board for logging on. And um, do we have a motion? Motion to adjourn. adjourn. Second. Motion by Nick. Uh, good question. Who's keeping minutes? You? Yeah, okay. So motion by Nick, second by Fiorella. All in favor, Nick? Yes. Fiorella? 
Yes. Gar? Yes. Joanne? She's not on anymore. Joanne? I don't think she's on anymore. Did she drop off? Looks like it. Hmm. Um, okay, let it know that Joanne dropped off. Um, no, no, I'm the last, so I vote yes to adjourn. Okay, thanks, folks. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for your efforts. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you. It's going to look great. Yeah, awesome. Bye bye.